The Government Employees Pension Fund today announced major changes to diversify its investment base, beginning with its role in enabling social and economic transformation. Up to 5% of funds can now be invested in programs like infrastructure projects, the green economy and broad-based black economic empowerment. Still in the studio with us is John Oliphant. Again, just John's Twitter handle, at John underscore Oliphant. Now, you've been traversing the continent extensively, looking for <coughs> investment opportunities. And off air, we were chatting. Warren said, what is your favorite place on the African continent other than South Africa? Sure. You know, like, it's a tricky question because... Um, you know, we, uh, Africa is, I mean, we are, we are very blessed and, and, and I've fallen in love with most of the countries I've been to. And uh, the question you're asking me, it's very tough. I don't think I can choose specific country, but I think uh, the potential, I mean, countries with greatest potential. I mean, we've been to Togo. I think it's, it's, it's a small country, but very interesting dynamics. Um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Abidjan in particular, very interesting um, uh, experiences there, Cameroon. I mean, the diversity, you know, and, and also I think my French was put a little bit on, and I realized Is that, that a uh, barrier, the Francophone territories that, that you've engaged now? No, in, in most countries in West Africa, the meeting was conducted in French. And uh, obviously, uh, we got a translator. We get a, we got a translator, but you know, sometimes some things can be lost in translation, you know. But uh, but I think over time, uh, we appreciated, you know, as our similarities, and also we appreciated the opportunities that exist. And I think going forward, as I've said in earlier on, in terms of the governance structures that we have put in place, and working very closely with our key strategic partners. Uh, the PIC, the, PI, the PAIDF, the Pan African Infrastructure Development Fund, which is managed by Harith. Working together, we think we can explore opportunities on the continent, and we think we can bring also other partners that have more experiences that they could share with us and be able to, to assist us to, to get our strategy going. And then also, I think the PIC, on behalf of the GPF, has done a, a very strategic investment for us um, in EcoBank as a group, and which is operating, I think, in 34 African countries, and that also gives us access to, you know, various markets and and also the, the the correct relationships and so forth in terms of deal flow and opportunities. And also, um, uh, we've also been looking at uh, an investment in in, in Tanzania, which is uh, in Tanga uh, for cement production. And also, I mean, if you look at the infrastructure story, you can see that we've got a master plan in terms of how we get going. To and there's no the rest for the weary. <laughs> it doesn't look as if you're going to get any sleep whatsoever. John, just aside from, I mean, the infrastructure is, is desperately needed on the continent, and it's going to be a great enabler of economic de development going forward. But another big feature has been the consumer, the, uh, the, the emerging African consumer and the emerging uh, African middle class. In terms of uh, listed equities, from what I've gathered about what you're talking about at the moment, mm -hmm. it's going to be the the infrastructure side is going to be very much sort of private vehicles. Do you have any plans to uh, invest significantly into the listed uh, African markets, including fixed income? Yeah, look, I mean, we will have um, uh, some exposure to listed markets, but I think we also need to appreciate the challenges, you know, in the listed market. I mean, the the end volumes. And also the, the liquidity is a key challenge relative to you know what we are used to here in South Africa. So we have, I mean, the PIC does have a mandate from the GPF to pursue opportunities also even in the listed space. And, uh, and I think they are exploring various ways in which they can implement the GPF's mandate. But also I think um, uh, we are more biased towards unlisted space, but we also appreciate the fact that it will take time to build their unlisted portfolio. So in the meantime, you don't want to be missing out on opportunities. So I think some sort of an exposure to listed market will be welcomed, but we also have to do it responsibly given the liquidity constraints and the possible impact that we might have in those markets given the size of the GPF. You have the mandate to invest 5% <coughs> of your assets outside of South Africa onto the continent, is that correct? Yeah. Do you see that changing dramatically in the future, Africa becoming a bigger proportion of your asset allocation? Uh, we, you know when you use the term Africa, you have to count South Africa. The rest of Africa. So 95% of, of Africa. our portfolio is invested in Africa. If we talk about rest of Africa. <laughs> I, I've known no, that. No, I was that just it, being funny there. <laughs> but it's true. It's a, yeah. it, it is actually, yeah. you offend people if you don't say rest of Africa. Yeah. Um, look, 
I think the, the first thing that we need to do is to demonstrate the value we can derive with the 5%. As you know that the investment strategy of the GPF has to be done in consultation with the Minister of Finance. We did that consultation process and we arrived at the 5% allocation. I think over time we need to demonstrate to him as well as other stakeholders that there is value and, and, and what can be achieved. And then I think in the long term there will be that opportunity to, to reopen up the debate and engage. But for now We've got the allocation, which I think is a good step forward. And then also I think it creates us an opportunity for us to, to go out there and look for opportunities. And when you look at 5%, I mean, that's, that's 50 billion rent in the context of the GPF. It's, it's very significant so, so, in the context so, of the GPF. You know, before you even start in discussions of 10% and what, what we need to say, you know, where are we going to find opportunities to be able to invest this 50 billion wisely and responsibly? Which brings us to an interesting uh, topic and, and one we, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier in the show, John, and that's around the, the, the skills that you use. I just wanted to get a breakdown. You, you're now responsible for about a trillion rand altogether, just over a trillion rand in assets. Mm. Um, you use the services of the Public Investment Corporation to handle a lot of the listed equities and fixed income in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to get a breakdown in terms of uh, what's the split between the PIC and the external investment managers and with regards to the private equity, do you plan to use third party private equity funds to manage some of those investments for you? Yeah. Look, uh, I mean, as we uh, alluded this morning at the stakeholder breakfast, um, we believe in a model of partnerships and we, we believe in engaging with partners that share our, our values. And I think the PSC is one of the partners that have demonstrated that. But also, I think going forward, as, as has always been our model, we'll also engage with, with, with the private sector around where they could play a meaningful role in assisting us to implement this, 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 this strategy. And then also- So will there be more opportunities <coughs> for the private sector down the line? Mainly in the understood space, I think. Because I think when you enter a, a, a low return environment, um, a managing cost becomes a very important element. And I think we have been very quite fortunate from the GPF perspective that our relationship with, with the PIC has been extremely beneficial when it comes to cost management. Because, I mean, the fee uh, we pay for their services, it's almost, what, 70% discount to what we're getting in the market. So I think as far as the listed space is, con is concerned, the, the bias is towards you know having more of the assets be managed internally at the PIC because it's 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 more cost effective, and then so also the message to those guys is drop your prices dramatically. Uh, well, <laughs> I, the message could be that PIC is very competitive. Exactly. Okay. Let, let's go with that stance. PIC <laughs> is very competitive. Yeah. So just in terms of the, uh, the the private equity, is that is that also going to be so? There's an opportunity for external uh, managers, but but we know that private equity can be quite expensive as well. The PRC, are they, are they geared to handle a lot of that money as well? Um, uh, currently, in terms of the revised model, uh, we've been engaging with the Public Investment Corporation. We've been very uh, busy with their uh, private placing memorandums. So they will be handling direct private equity investments uh, going forward. But also, I think you know, it will be a complementary process. I mean, I mean, if you look at opportunities and you look at the amount of money that needs to be invested, I think it's roughly a role for for, for, for everyone, you know, we just need to ensure uh, that um, uh, that those roles are, you know, complementary and they add value to the GEPF because our ultimate goal is to generate returns at a reasonable cost so that we are able to continuously be able to afford our pensioners uh, good increases uh, going forward into the future. What about other emerging markets? We are running out of time. Travels mm. beyond the, the continent? Look, uh, to be quite honest, uh, we spent most of this year really trying to sort out the unlisted space within the continent and within South Africa. And I think um, uh, once uh, this model has been bedded down, and hopefully it will be bedded down before the end of Q1 next year, um, uh, we'll then start uh, reviewing the, the, our foreign portfolio. Uh, but we've been quite fortunate because, I mean, when we transitioned the portfolio, we transitioned it at uh, about 682 to the dollar. And, um, and, and there wasn't any, any need to do clever things because we felt that even if the, the, the currency weakens slightly, we'll be able to generate the type of returns we're looking for. And that, that view played itself out. But I think we are now at a stage where we need to say now, how do we sweat those assets? And I think 
uh, once we have better down this model, then uh, we'll, wa we'll work towards um, and making sure that we will bet a, a proper model for that. And obviously, the bias will be towards uh, emerging markets or emerging economies, given the global dynamics and the changes of a move from west to east and all sorts of things happening. But I think that presents very interesting investment opportunities. Um, and, and we've been learning quite a lot, I mean, about countries like Mongolia and the South. So Ulan Bata, exactly. capital of Mongolia. Right. <coughs> just, just a final one from your side. Yeah, I just wanted to ask John if, if uh, aside from managing a trillion rand uh, fund, do you do you invest in shares directly yourself? And do you have a hot do you have a hot stock tip for us? <laughs> <laughs> and you thought the question on on your favourite country was a difficult one. <laughs> To be quite honest, um, um, I view myself as a more of a strategist than long-term thinker. Um, so I really don't spend time. I mean, I don't know how often I open Bloomberg or look at INET, you know. Um, so I'm not really clued up about, you know, what is happening on, on in, in the stock in the stock uh, side. So I don't want to do a stock pick and then people go out there and buy the shares <laughs> because John said they are going to run. But uh, but um, uh, personally, I do, yes, uh, make uh, uh, investment. I do buy a few shares. And, um, and to be quite honest, I wish my, my personal portfolio could perform as good as the GPF. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave it right there. John Oliphant, Head of Actuarial Investments at the Government Employees Pension Fund.